Welcome to another 15 minute tech talk. My name is Thomas Dimitrovich and I will be your host. <laughs> so we're going to spend the next 15 minutes talking about AFCIs. Let's get the PowerPoint queued up. So arc fault circuit interrupters, combination type versus branch feeder type versus dual function. I'm constantly getting questions on this. And if you're familiar with my 15 minute tech talks, you know, I'm going to put that timer on. And when I do, we're gonna see if I can get done with this in 15 minutes. So this is live, Brian Rock, this is live. So here we go, I got this. I'm gonna put the 15 minute timer on and we are going to get started. There we go, 15 minutes on the clock right over there. All right, so let's talk about the arc fault circuit interrupter. The AFCIs entered the National Electrical Code a while back, 1999 into the into the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, we see an arc fault circuit interrupter hit the streets with regard to providing protection for circuits within a residential home uh, that reduces the likelihood of things like this occurring, which is your electrical fire. What you're showing up here is uh, a, unfortunately a common issue where we see the NM wire may have gone through uh, or near these gusset plates, and what what typically will happen is you'll get um, you'll get some rubbing going on of your conductors, your NM wire, and that could cause arcing and sparking that can ignite uh, anything flammable around that area. Um, so, and in some cases, what we've learned over the history from a from a historical perspective, a lot of these fires occur behind the walls, and uh, because of the lack of oxygen, etc., they will um, they'll fester and. Uh, uh, when they do finally get air, they take off like a blaze. Uh, so in any case, uh, you have AFCIs. They are there to prevent or reduce the likelihood of an electrical fire, and they are not there for shock protection. These are common questions that I get when it comes to AFCIs, and I get these via email. I get these uh, via, you know, um, when I'm doing programs, et cetera. Do AFCIs have some level of ground fault protection? Why do some arc fault circuit interrupters uh, trip on grounded neutrals and others don't? Uh, what's the difference between a branch feeder? This is a big one. You know, the, you know, unfortunately, I, I personally, I hate the name combination type AFCI because a lot of people think that it's a combination of AFCI and GFCI. In reality, it's not. Um, and we're going to learn about that today. Another one, branch feeders don't offer series arc protection. I keep hearing that. I'm going to dispel that myth, myth because they do provide a level of series arc protection. Combination type AFCs, and the other fallacy I always hear is they say, well, the combination type added the series arc protection for the branch feeder, which I'm going to help you understand uh, the, uh, the facts behind that so that hopefully we can talk a little bit more educated about that. All right, what in the world is an OBC? And what does it have to do with an AFCI? We're gonna talk about the OBC, which is the outlet branch circuit AFCI, and that is a receptacle type AFCI. We're gonna talk about that as well. All right, so let's first, let's get into the standard. The, the AFCI is designed and built and tested to the UL1699 standard, which covers arc fault circuit interrupters. And what I'm showing you here is sort of a table out of that standard that basically shows you the tests that we put an AFCI through. So you remember, you think about a UL standard. The UL standard is there to establish a, a, a line, a level playing field for anybody who makes that product, whatever product it is. If I come out with a Van Ducky, you know, I come out with this new pen and I say this new pen is, uh, is, uh, is an arc detection device. Uh, the I, I will list this to a standard, and if one doesn't exist, then you know we create one. We'll probably create an outline of investigation, and then uh, and then it'll become a standard. But this device, uh, I UL or uh, or another standards body, anybody who makes these standards for products would come up with all the tests you want to put this product through to uh, to ensure it does what it's supposed to do and it does it safely. So um, Keith Laughlin, I'm talking about your pen, buddy. In any case, the AFCI is listed to the 1699 standard. That gives us the performance test that we need to pass. Okay, 
So section 40, 41, and 42 are three key sections in the standard that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to focus a lot on section 40 because that's where the rubber meets the road with arc detection. There's, and, and I'll talk about each of those. The second group of tests that we put AFCIs through is what we call the unwanted tripping test. What this is, this is to, this is the, these are the tests where many manufacturers or the manufacturers of AFCI solutions go above and beyond. Uh, there are bare minimum requirements in the standard though that says we don't want these to trip unintentionally or falsely uh, detecting arcs that aren't really there. So we throw a lot of stuff at, at the AFCIs to make sure that they're resilient. Uh, and I call it creating the best goldfish to swim in a dirty pond uh, because we can throw a lot of stuff. You get uh, products that are very noisy. Dimmer switches are bad. Uh, uh, or, you know, just moving that up and down the waveforms look terrible. Uh, treadmills, especially the ones I run on, they look terrible uh, from a waveform perspective. So you don't want those to mistakenly trip the AFCIs. And then the, the last one is the operation inhibition. And what that means is we want to make sure that the arc can be detected when there's other loads on that circuit. So we want we want to we try to mask those arcs and we want to make sure that the AFCI can still detect and uh, and provide a level of protection for uh, detecting those arcing the bad arcs as opposed to the good arcs. So that's sort of the groups. Now I'm going to focus on section 40 because as you'll see right here, the carbonized path arc clearing time test, which is section 40.4, the SPT2 insulation cut is the only one that's different for the combination type AFCI. The combination type AFCI has to do all of the other tests and the only one that the branch feeder type AFCI doesn't have to do is that one test. Now, when we say branch feeder, when, when the AFCIs first entered the National Electrical Code, they permitted the use of the branch feeder type AFCI. I believe it was the 2005 version of the code. I'd have to, I'd have to go behind my screen here to g actually get that uh, exact reference. But there was a version, I believe it was the 2005. I know Brian Rock's on, on here, so is Neha. They guys probably know as well. Um, but there was a time where they said the branch feeder was no longer permitted to be used is part of the installation. So we moved, migrated from the branch feeder type to the combination type AFCI to pull in that protection of SPT2 uh, conductors. So let's talk about each of those tests. The first test I'll talk about is the carbonized path arc ignition test. And you'll notice there's three lines in this image up here. Think about an NM piece of wire. There are three conductors in NM. You have the hot, you have the equipment grounding conductor and you have the neutral. The hot and the neutral are, san are sandwiched around the equipment grounding conductor. So what you see here is in this carbonized path arc ignition test, this is a test that is done at five amps, or down to five amps. And whoa, whoop, whoop, whoop. hold on, there we go. This is a test that's done down to five amps. I'm trying to pull up my, uh, there we go. And it is, it basically does our series arc test down to five amps on NM wire. Now, so remember what I just said, obviously based upon that picture, this is a cut only in one of the conductors. So the arc that we generate here is in series with the load. I'm not cutting across all three of those conductors. I'm only cutting the hot conductor and I'm in series with the load. So I do this uh, in, in, and I, I energize this. I take this current down to a five amp series arc with the load. Now, it just so happens that all of the people, all of the breaker manufacturers who made the branch feeder type AFCI realized that all I need to do is put 30 milliamp or some level of ground fault protection of equipment inside of the breaker because eventually if you cause an arc and, and think about what's in between the, the, the hot and the neutral is what? The equipment grounding conductor. I'm causing a series arc in the hot and uh, the, the uh, uh, ungrounded conductor and what will happen is that will carbonize and it will go 
to the equipment grounding conductor and I can detect and pass this test based upon ground fault protection of equipment. So all of your branch feeder type AFCIs had a ground fault protection of equipment level of uh, protection for the uh, AFCI protection. And that was there to pass this test, which is a series arc test in NM wire. All right, so the next one is what we call the carbonized path arc interruption test. And this is, we take an insulation cut directly across all three conductors. We wrap it, we, uh, we charge it up with like 15 kV to create some carbon, to create a path from go going. Then we, uh, we put about 75 amps. So this is a 75 amp arc detection test. And I'm not gonna get into how we came up with 75 amps. Maybe that's another 15 minute tech uh, Tuesday. Um, or tech talk, <laughs> maybe it's a tech Tuesday, you never know. Uh, but in any case, I create this arc and it goes, it goes parallel with the load. So it's a higher arc level detection. We, we set the threshold at 75 amps and we'll detect a parallel arc via this carbonized path arc interruption for NM wire. And we provide parallel arc protection for all of the NM wire that's connected downstream of the circuit breaker or downstream of the outlet if it's an OBC AFCI device. Okay, so that's the carbonized path arc interruption test and that is what we call the parallel 75 amp high energy arc on NM wire. The next test is the carbonized path arc clearing test. This is the test that gets us an SPT2 cord, which is the only test that differentiates a branch feeder AFCI from a combination type AFCI. And what you'll notice here is there's only two conductors. It's your grounded and your ungrounded conductor, that black and white wire. Now, an SPT2 cord, what that conductor is, you'll see it on lamps, you'll see it on uh, appliances and things like that, that have, that's that brown conductor, that brown cable that has a hot and a neutral, uh, that has the, you know, the plug on one side and it connects to say your lamp or whatnot. There's no equipment grounding conductor. There's only two prongs on that. So I can't detect a five amp series arc in that conductor with ground fault protection of equipment because it, there's no return equipment grounding conductor. So to pass this test, which is the differentiator between a branch feeder and a combination type AFCI, I could not use ground fault protection of equipment. I had to come up with another method and every manufacturer does it different. This is what you'd call the secret sauce that the patented uh, algorithms that help me detect a five amp series arc. It's usually at various frequencies uh, and not trip on uh, something that's not a harmful arc, right? Uh, so in any case, this is the arc and this is the series arc test. And I'll show you a demonstration uh, video that we use to demonstrate the series arc detection uh, for an AFCI. Now, what I'm going to show you, the well, before I show you that video, I'm going to just explain this. So, so and I'm highlighting the fact that that this test is not performed on a branch feeder, but it is performed on the combination type AFCI and it is the only test that is different between these two devices. So that just sort of helps you understand. Now this next video is going to be a series arc that is not on, a, on, on a, uh, an AFCI breaker, it is on a thermal magnetic circuit breaker. This is a five amp series arc on a 15 amp circuit breaker, which will not be detect detected, but can cause electrical fires. So that's a carbon rod and then a copper rod. This is in series with the load and it's only a five amp arc. Now that's on a thermomagnetic circuit breaker and a thermomagnetic circuit breaker is not designed to detect these types of arcs. Um, and, 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 and for, you know, and, and this is truly a series arc because there's no going to ground. There's no going to an equipment ground. So only a combination type AFCI will detect this. And I would show you the video of that, but it's not as exciting as this because it trips very fast and you don't get to see much. So 
you know, no, you're showing you something that's uh, pointless. But in any case, this is uh, the test that's done. And you'll see it's only an, it's an SPT2 cord. There's only two conductors, hot and neutral, and there is no equipment grounding conductor in that picture. So I have to test and make sure that I can detect that. Now, here's what happened. When we went from, when we went to the combination type, there's no requirement in UL 1699 that I have to have ground fault protection of equipment. There's no requirement in the National Electrical Code that says our AFCIs have to have ground fault protection of equipment. So here's what happened. As a manufacturer, all manufacturers looked at it and said, well, you know, I, pro I don't need to provide GFPE. So some manufacturers took it out completely. Some manufacturers kept it in. And some manufacturers uh, put it in one model and didn't put it in another. So uh, depending upon the manufacturer, you may or may not have ground fault protection of equipment. So not all combination type AFCIs will have GFPE inside those units. Just be mindful of that. Now, those that don't, um, in some cases, if they're if they're rated, uh, if their voltage rating is uh, is slash rated and not just rated 120 volts, many of these devices are only rated 120 volts, so you can't put a handle tie on them. If they're slash rated, then you can put a handle tie on them and use them in a shared neutral application. But for the most part, AFCIs on shared neutral, you know, uh, applications where you, you need a two pole AFCI and those are available from all circuit breaker manufacturers. There's the fun test. This is what we call the guillotine test. The guillotine test is uh, a test in UL 1699 and it is there to help me detect a parallel arc in SPT2 cord, remember SPT2 cord only has a hot and a neutral, and that's what you you that's the conductor that goes to those lamp cords and things of that nature. The test that we use in 1699 to detect that arc is what we call I call it the guillotine test because you're basically cutting an SPT2 cord with a with a razor blade, and I'm going to show you a video of that, but I'm going to set this up to help you understand what you're looking at. The first thing is. Uh, what you'll notice in that line, uh, the, the, the line that's I'm pointing to there is an SPT2 conductor that's sort of going away from you uh, in this video. Don't look at the rod. You'll see the copper rod, in the, uh, uh, which was the previous test. We're looking down below that copper rod. You'll see, a, you'll see two, two, uh, uh, two wood pieces, and then in between that is the SPT2 cord. The other important piece of this is the razor blade. Uh, and that razor blade is on an angle. And, and uh, again, this doesn't look like the guillotine that we would typically use from a safety perspective. This is what we use for demonstrations. So what happens is you push this, this um, uh, what do you call it, uh, razor blade into the SPT2 cord and you cause arcing. Now up above, you'll notice there's three lights and there's a blue handle. The blue handle is the thermal magnetic circuit breaker. The thermal magnetic circuit breaker will not trip on this arc. It's a 75 amp arc on a 15 amp circuit breaker. And you'll say, well, why wouldn't I detect that? It's because when that arc occurs on the SPT2 cord, it's so sporadic, there's not enough energy to heat the bimetal within the thermomagnetic circuit breaker or trip it instantaneously. And I have a video of that, and I'll put a link up here uh, so that you can click on it and go take a look at it, uh, on how a thermomagnetic circuit breaker operates and functions. So I, again, check up above once this is published, and you'll be able to click on that link. So it's not enough energy to heat the bimetal nor trip it magnetically. Now let's watch uh, this in action. So this is a 75 amp. I just turned the circuit breaker on. Yeah, I am a hand model now. And that arcing will not trip the thermal magnetic circuit breaker. And that's the stuff that causes fires inside of a residential home. So you'll notice we're, we're basically taking that razor blade and putting it into that SPT2 cord and causing it to arc. It's not tripping that thermomagnetic circuit breaker, but it is, um, it is able to uh, start an electrical fire. Now, again, I would show you it on an AFCI circuit breaker, but it's just not as exciting because the AFCI trips. 
And I've only got 15 minutes, which I've blown that about two minutes ago. So here's all of the levels of protection that are that are uh, that are provided by an AFCI. You have remember one, two, and three. That's your point. That's your uh, high energy or a high level arcing current, 75 amps and above, is one and two. That is in your NMY, NM, NMY, NM wire, NMB wire. That's that uh, you know your hot equipment grounding conductor and your neutral, and also in your SPT2 cord. So I can detect your uh, high energy arcs in an SPT2 cord down to 75 amps. Um, when I get to your uh, low level uh, carbonized path arc clearing test, that's your low level. That's in that's your five amp series arc in NM wire. So it's not fair to say that a branch feeder AFCI does not do series arc protection, and the combination does because a branch feeder AFCI does do series arc protection of the installed NMB wire down to five amps. What it doesn't do is give you that number four carbonized path arc clearing time at five amps in an SPT2 cord. Why? Because historically we have uh, provided the protection for, uh, for that five amp series arc in an NM wire by leveraging ground fault protection of equipment. I can't do that in an SPT2 cord or a zip cord or whatever you want to call it. All right. Now, dual function. What's a dual function AFCI? Dual function AFCI is when I add another feature like ground fault circuit interrupter protection. So I can take GFCI, I could take that, I could take a standard thermal magnetic breaker that is listed to UL489. I can add AFCI technology to it, list it to UL1699 as well, in addition to UL489. Then, and because there's a microprocessor in there, I'm probably listing, listing that to UL1999 as well. And then I can add GFCI protection, which is a UL943 type of function uh, or protection, which is personnel protection. And, I, and all of that comes in one package, and we call that a dual function. Dual be, meaning AFCI and GFCI. Uh, there we, we used to have, uh, Eaton used to make a UL1053 device, which is ground fault protection of equipment, and we had it set a trip at 30 milliamps. Uh, we don't, I don't believe we make that in the combination type AFCI uh, anymore. Um, I know we have uh, ground fault protection of equipment in our B, in our CH brand, which is uh, the value proposition for that product, because ground fault protection does bring a lot to the table, provides a lot of protection. Uh, it will detect those grounded neutrals. Uh, an AFCI without ground fault protection of equipment, combination type AFCI without ground fault protection of equipment or GFCI, will not detect your grounded neutrals or any type of leakage currents because it's only looking for that arcing signature. And then you have the OBC AFCI. So what's the OBC AFCI? That is basically everything we just talked about inside of a receptacle. Now here's the big difference between an OBC receptacle that has all of these capabilities of a combination type AFCI. It looks downstream, whether it's in the connected cord or at those load terminals for parallel and series arcs parallel and series arcs in NM wire based upon these tests and parallel and series uh, arc detection for all any connected SPT2 cord. What it cannot do is provide that protection of parallel arc on the primary side. It will detect a series, it will detect a series arc on the primary side. It can't clear a fault, whether it be series or parallel between that device and the thermomagnetic circuit breaker, right? I can, in the OBC AFCI, detect a series arc that's upstream, but I can't clear that fault because I'm downstream of it. I do open and, and remove the load so that I'm not pulling current through that damaged conductor, but I can't uh, take that conductor offline because it doesn't communicate with the circuit breaker to say, hey, I need you to clear and clear the fault so that you protect this home run circuit or the conductors that's that's behind me. It, it may or may not be the home run, depending upon where you have it installed in the power distribution system. If you're following the National Electrical Code, we tried to take those steps to make sure that it is it, it the OBC is at that first outlet because of the fact it can't look behind it and there's vulnerability in protecting that home run circuit. So that's the OBC AFCI. So all of those tests we just looked at, the OBC goes through looking downstream, it can detect that series arc upstream and take the load off, but it can't detect a parallel arcing fault 
upstream uh, because it's just, you know, it's, it's a part of the load now and it's taken out of the picture if there is a parallel arc upstream. And that's my 15 minute tech talk on AFCIs. We blew that one out of the park. I don't know how long ago we lost that 15 minute timer, but I'm getting better. I don't know. I am going to chop off the beginning and I'm going to chop off the end. Um, I can't really take out anything in the middle because it's all meat and potatoes. That's where it's all at. So hopefully you got something out of this 15 minute tech talk. I appreciate you dialing in and watching. Uh, and so I'm signing off for now for the recorded version of this. And I'm going to stay on here to see if there's any questions on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks for joining.